It has been six years since the launch of the original Raspberry Pi Zero, a small form factor single board computer. Whilst it was refreshed in early 2017 with the addition of wireless connectivity, a major update has been a long time coming. Last week, the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, and we're going to review this board today. This video is the first in a series of tutorials that will show you how to use your Pi Zero 2W. Make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date. We also have a written version of this review on our website if you would prefer to read it. It's linked below. So let's get started. One of the headline features of this board is actually its price. The Raspberry Pi Foundation is listing the Zero 2W at just $15 which is about £11 in UK money. However, I haven't yet found a UK retailer selling it for below £13.50, which is a shame. I should note now that there is only one SKU of the Pi Zero 2, and that is the W SKU with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. So there is no uh, upgraded model of the original Zero without wireless functionality. Pretty much the only change to this board is a direct replacement of the SOC, or System on a Chip. The original Pi Zero W had a single core ARM processor clocked at one gigahertz. The new Pi Two Zero W features a quad core ARM A53 CPU, which also runs at one gigahertz, although this can be overclocked up to 1.5 gigahertz, according to Les Pounder from Tom's Hardware. I will be covering overclocking the Pi Zero 2W in an upcoming video. On board, there is 512 megabytes of RAM, which is actually part of the RP3A0 SIP, or system in package. You can see how the original Pi Zero stacked the RAM on top of the CPU, but in the newer version, it's all incorporated into the same package. The remainder of the features remain mostly unchanged. There are two micro USB connectors, one for power and one for USB 2.0, a mini HDMI connector, a micro SD card slot, and a CSI camera connector. The Wi Fi connectivity has been slightly upgraded and can support marginally faster Wi Fi speeds, but unfortunately, it can only support 2.4 GHz networks. In terms of the ports, whilst I understand that this board is supposed to be a drop in replacement of the original, albeit with a speed boost, I can't help but wish they had gone for USB-C connectors. Most USB devices you connect to this board will be via a micro USB to USB adapter anyway, so it wouldn't be too difficult to swap that over to a USB-C adapter and may give a bit more future proofing. I can imagine fairly soon having to con convert micro USB to USB-C and that's a bit pointless if you could just put a USB-C connector on board. But that would probably increase the list price a little bit. In terms of dimensions, the Pi Zero 2W is identical to the previous boards at 65 by 30 millimeters. All the mounting holes remain in the same place and the new board can be directly dropped into a case designed for the previous Zero. So how much impact does this new quad-core processor make? Well, it is, certainly isn't going to challenge some of the full-size Raspberry Pis like the 3 or the 4, despite having the same chip as the original uh, Pi 3s. This is predominantly due to only having half a gigabyte of RAM, which is a big limitator as it's also shared with the GPU. So performance with a graphical desktop isn't fantastic, but it is much better than the original Pi Zero W. I imagine most people using this board will be running in headless mode, which is uh, without a graphical desktop. And this will actually increase the performance as there are much less overheads because um, you don't have to render a desktop or animations or anything like that. To put it simply, the more powerful processor does equal a significant performance boost. For example, in a BZIP2 file compression test, the Pi 20W was just a tad over twice as fast as the original Pi Zero whilst compressing the same file. By now, the Pi Zero 2W has been pretty heavily benchmarked, um, both performance wise and thermally. So if you want plenty more numbers, I'd recommend taking a look at uh, Gareth half a Cree's article about benchmarking the Pi Zero 2 against the original Pi Zero W and the Pi 3 and Pi 4. Uh, that article is linked in the description. 
Obviously, with the dramatically increased performance of the RP3A0 chip on board, we do expect some power increase uh, or power consumption increase. The primary comparison for this is going to be the original Pi Zero W, and in our testing, the original Pi Zero W idled at about 100 milliamps in headless mode, which is no HDMI on or peripherals connected. Um, it's basically just sitting there, um, not doing a whole lot. Under a CPU stress, this bumps up the power consumption to 260 milliamps. Whereas the Pi Zero 2W, on the other hand, idles around a similar point, about 120 milliamps, but under load almost doubles the power consumption at about 500 milliamps. So to conclude this quick review, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W is a fantastic compact single board computer at the $15 retail price. I think this is going to be an incredibly popular board for a wide range of projects. However, if you need a little more RAM or features such as Ethernet, for example, then I would consider getting one of the lower end Raspberry Pi 4s at roughly twice the cost of this, this board here. That being said, if you need a compact board, then it's going to be very difficult to beat the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Do let us know what you think in the comments and please make sure to subscribe to keep up to date. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.